Flat supernova simulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot for, for this opportunity and for this very nice workshop. I'm Sajada Bar, and today I will be telling you about AI for supernova neutrinos and more specifically AI for the implementations of neutrino flavor conversions in core collapse supernova simulations. So let me start with this motivation. This is the mm, okay. Let me start with this motivation. This is the plot that you have already seen in Iran and uh, in Thomas stock. I would like to first uh, elaborate a bit on this and then I will explain how AI can help us with the implementations of neutrino flavor conversions in core collapse supernova simulations. What I have here are the results of our uh, 2D, super, uh, 2D supernova simulations in which, for the f uh, in which for the first time we implemented neutrino flavor conversions in a sort of parametric and, and schematic way, of course, for two different uh, models, an exploding uh, uh, so, uh, nine solar mass progenitor model, so you see the, the, the shock, and also a non-exploding uh, 20 solar mass progenitor models. So what I have here are the proto-neutron star radia, uh, the proto-neutron star, and shock radia as a function of the post-bounce time. So, uh, and, and here different curves uh, are showing the results for different flavor convergence scenarios. While for the, while the black curve showed the results for this traditional, I would say, uh, uh, supernova simulations with no flavor conversions, the colorful curves show the results for the uh, simulations in which flavor conversions are implemented. So, like what we assume is that flavor conversion just is turned on below some, some threshold density. For example, like if you look at this orange curve, this 10 to the 9 means that for this model, we assume that flavor conversion exists only for densities below 10 to the 9 uh, gram per cubic centimeter. What uh, we learned from this, this result is that for, the, for our exploding model, for this low mass exploding model, the flavor conversion seems to help the, the supernova explosion, at least like if you compare uh, this, I would say, more realistic, like 10 to the 9 and 10 to the 10 models with this black curve, then the explosion you see happens, occurs like, like much faster. Whereas in the non-exploding model, if you look at like this curve, the black curve and the other colorful curves again, it seems that the, the, the flavor conversions in the supernova simulation tends to uh, suppress the and, and hinder the explosion. So now let's discuss briefly why this happens. So when indeed there are here there are two def two competing effects. So first of all, if we look at the uh, the neutrino energy spectra for for electron neutrino, electron anti neutrino, and nu x muon and tau neutrinos and anti neutrinos, we see that for higher energy neutrinos, the uh, the nu x the muon and tau neutrinos and anti neutrinos they are, they are more plentiful. So this means that the dominant flavor conversion channel would be the conversion of nu x to electron neutrinos and anti neutrinos, which which uh, which experience more interaction with the supernova matter. And this means that this conversion channel, nu x to nu e and nu e bar, this can indeed increase the heating rate, which can help the explosion. And I think it was for this reason that, that, that many of us, including myself, we expected that, uh, that neutrino flavor conversions should help, in principle at least, like the core collapse supernova explosion before running these simulations. But it turns that we have another effect which competes with this one, which competes uh, with, the, with the first effect. And this effect is that if we look at the lower energy neutrinos, then, and we look at this, this black curves with no flavor conversion, then the new X is more, dumb, is more plentiful than the electron neutrinos and electron anti neutrinos. So this means that the dominant flavor conversion at these energies would be the conversion of nu and nu bar to nu x which 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 can which which can actually leave the supernova environment more easily because they have like weaker interaction with matter and this uh, increases the total luminosities the, the neutrino luminosities which in turn increases the contraction rate of the proto-neutron star and the, co the contraction rate of the, of the shock wave, which, which, uh, which is, like, is not a good news for the explosion. So, yeah, this is, uh, yeah. 
So yeah, this is, this is a very, I think this is a very important result because this just shows that one cannot blindly ignore the neutrino flavor conversions in core collapse supernova simulations. This is something that somehow you need to address them. You cannot just put them under the rug. So, but at the same time, uh, one should uh, keep in mind that this, this, is, this was a, like a parametric study, so not, not a very, I would say, self-consistent one. This means that, first of all, we didn't check the criteria for the occurrence of flavor conversions, especially, for example, when we talk about fast flavor conversions, we are talking about this very specific criterion which should be carefully checked and see if flavor conversions exist in the first place. But in our case, we just based everything on the matter density. Like, like, like we, we consider a, a, a threshold for the matter density below which we assume that flavor conversion occurs. Of course, this is not correct. But, but for this study, we had good reasons to do that because first of all, like we did not have a, like a tool to, to, to check this criteria for us. And more importantly, we wanted to to check, like, like to, uh, to check it systematically to see like, uh, the occurrence of neutrino flavor conversions in different supernova regions, like, uh, like uh, uh, how different are, 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 the, are the impacts, actually. Also, assuming instantaneous flavor equilibration, especially for the case of fast flavor conversions, the equilibrium state in our study was chosen to maximize the impact of flavor conversion. So what we assumed was that like, like the neutrino gas experience is a full, I would say, equipartition up to the extent which is consistent with lepton number conservation loss. But this is not always correct. So nature is not like this. So now let's see how AI can help us in this business. So in principle, what we need is something like a black box, so perhaps a module in our, in our supernova code, which takes some initial values of some neutrino-related quantities in the neutrino gas, like here I will explain later on what this, this, this I0 and I1s are. First of all, it should, it should decide if the flavor conversion exists or not, for example, for fast flavor conversions, this is, this is one level of, of uh, AI related stuff. And if it exists, then we should, we should have again like, like a black box that, that, that returns, uh, returns us the final equilibrated va values of these quantities. Of course, with, uh, with, with, uh, with respect to the physical conservation laws. So, yeah. So let's start with the criteria for, fast flavor, for the occurrence of fast flavor conversions. So fast flavor conversions occur if there is a crossing in the angular distributions of electron neutrinos and electron antineutrinos, of course, assuming the nu x and nu x bar, they have similar distributions. So this means that when I look at the angular distributions of neutrinos, for a range of angle, electron neutrinos are dominant, and for the other range, ele electron antineutrinos are dominant. And if this happens, then fast flavor conversion exists, and they can occur on a scale determined by the neutrino number density, which could be very small, at least in principle, on the surface of the, in the, in the neutrino decoupling region. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, uh, criterion, but why should I use AI for this uh, simple problem? The problem is that I do not, normally in the state of the art simulations, I do not have access to the full angular uh, like, like distribution. So instead, I have, we, we just have access to a number of uh, uh, angular moments defined this way. So this is a very limited amount of information we have from the, from the angular distribution of neutrinos. So specifically, in the M1 scheme, one has only access to these zero and first moments, so I0 and I1. So now we want AI to detect fast flavor conversion based on this limited information, the I0 and I1 on the fly, I mean, during the simulation. So we want something very fast. So, but no worries, this is a, like an ordinary classification problem. So we have just some inputs, like the, uh, the, the, the zero and first moments of electron neutrinos and electron antineutrinos, so in principle, four inputs. And then we want to do this classification problem, yes or no, the crossing exists or, or not. So, in principle, we have, we have four quantities, four inputs, but, but since we are talking about the crossing, some normalization factor is irrelevant here, here because like the, it doesn't really matter if the crossing is here or here or here. So then, in, like, like, like this, this four 
inputs reduces to uh, three inputs. So, uh, like given this idea, I recently checked to see if one can one can use this idea to to uh, to detect fast flavor conversions, uh, like like given the zero and first moments of neutrinos and anti-neutrinos. So I started with some parametric angular distributions, or two, two, two parametric angular distributions, not, not very relevant for supernova neutrinos. So, and, and you see the, the machine, and, and I use just traditional machine learning for this problem. And you see the machine learning does, I would say, a great job in predicting the, uh, in, in detecting fast flavor conversion and angular uh, right crossing. And, and it would be, I think, more impressive if you know that even this small accuracy that we have for these different models, the logistic regression, KN, SVM, and, and decision trees, even these small accuracies that we have, they are not uh, the fault of the machine learning methodologies. They are coming from the fact that we here have, la uh, have noisy labels. So I'm using two different distributions, and it happens that in some boundary regions, one of the methods, one of the distributions says, yes, I have a crossing here, and the other says, no, I don't have a crossing here. And this is the source of this small inaccuracy. So then we check this idea for realistic data with Nagakura, uh, uh, yeah? And, 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 uh, and as you see, the, uh, the, the, the idea and the method works, works for, I would say, great also for realistic data. And as you see, the, the, the error can be much smaller than, than this, than this parametric distributions because here I just have a single, like it's not parametric, but single distribution. And based on that single distribution, I try and test my methods. So still, like, like I can have uh, accuracies up to like 99 or 98%. So far, we have addressed only uh, the, um, uh, what was it? We have added only the crossing in the zenith angle of the radial direction, but one can have in principle situations that there is no crossing in the zenith angle, but the crossing exists in the, in the azimutal angle. So this, this is a sort of more or less a similar problem with the difference that now instead of having just one value for the, uh, for the, for, for, for the, for the first neutrino first moment, we have like three values. We have, this, this is a vector because we need all this information to see the crossing in the azimutal angle. And, uh, and, and uh, we use some, some uh, real, like, like supernova simulations to check this, this idea. Uh, some 2D, I think it was an, a rotating and non-rotating 11.2 solar mass models. And as you see, when we have this, this uh, this, uh, like this, this vectors, instead of just having a single value for, for the z first moment, we have all the three components. Of course, we are providing more information to our model, and, and the accuracy can be in some cases, and for some models, can be 100%. It's interesting to know that, I do not show the results here, but machine learning, in principle, can distinguish different crossings from each other. The crossings occurring, in the radial direction the, for the zenith angle, then the crossing occurring for the, in the, azimu for the azimutal angle. And this could be, in principle, important because when we, when we think about like the neutrino flavor conversion in the linear regime, the symmetric and, 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 and non-symmetric cases could be very different, could, could, could be, in principle, could lead to very different uh, 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 yeah, uh, outcomes. So, uh, yeah. So now let's see how we can use uh, AI for for predicting the asymptotic state of the fast flavor conversions, if if there is any. So again, what we need is a, like a black box that that we have already decided if 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 the conversion flavor conversion exists or not, and if this the answer is yes, then now we need a black box that takes this, the va the initial values of this zero and first moment and returns the final their final values. So, for example, one can take this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this periodic box solution where, where we have a very simple analytical form for the survival, uh, for the angular distribution of the average survival probabilities. So, here is the crossing, and what happens is that on one side of the crossing, there is total flavor equipartition. So, here if we have two flavors, so this is 0.5. And on the other side of the crossing, basically nothing happens. This solution can, can be realized, for example, if the, the growth rate of the fast flavor conversion is very high. So, so given this solution, 
we, tr we recently tried to uh, we recently tried to check um, to, to, ch uh, to uh, recently tried to check if neural networks can predict the outcome of flavor conversions for such for such a scenario. I did this. Uh, yeah, I forgot to put the reference here. I did this with Meng Ru and uh, and Suwei. So what we have is uh, like single layer neural network which takes in principle like we have the input quantities are the zero to the first moments of electron neutrinos and electron anti -neutrino neutrinos and the new x and we have a normalization factor so we have five input parameters which are like like these ratios because we have already normalized them by by this for example number density of the electron neutrinos and notably we have this flux factors as input and it returns like uh, the, uh, the, the zero and first moments of electron neutrinos and anti neutrinos, and for, uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and the corresponding quantities for nu x can be, can be obtained considering the conservation loss. On top of this, uh, this like, like, like this, uh, this input, we, we perform a layer of feature engineering in which we add some, some novel features to our problem. One of them, which we believe they help the, the, the neural network to make better predictions. You will see the results. So one of them is the, is the, the, the crossing location. So if, if you look at this, uh, uh, yeah, one, uh, yeah, one of them is the, the crossing location. And the other uh, quantity is a binary which tells us that the equilibration happens on the right side of the crossing or on the left side of the crossing. Very simple input. So here I show our, uh, our errors as a number of the number of epochs in a number of training epochs. What we have here is the, like the, the orange curve. This is the absolute relative error for the output quantities. And this is the absolute relative error for the number of electron neutrinos plus the number of electron anti neutrinos, which is an important quantity for us. And we wanted to make sure that this is like we have, we have a minimum error for this quantity. So as you see, the, the errors like, that could be very low, as low as just 5% or, or even less than 5% for the network, for the architecture where we have the extra feature. For comparison, I also put the results for the uh, architecture, similar result for the architecture where we do not have these extra features. So you see that, that uh, like, like introducing novel features could, could help a bit. For this case, it's not a lot, but we will see that this, uh, these novel features could, could help a lot in some other cases. And I forgot to mention that this is a single energy neutrino, yes. So when we go to, uh, when we go to, to multi energy neutrino gas, then the situation are different. So we have neutrinos with different energies. First of all, we ran some simulations and we learned that if the, if the growth rate of fast flavor conversion is large enough, large enough in, at least in our model, if the growth rate is larger than like around 10 to the three, the vacuum frequency, the, yeah, the average vacuum frequency, then all the neutrino beams, all the, the, all the energy beams, they follow the same survival, the distribution of survival probabilities. But I have here is the dashed line, is the average survival probability, energy average survival probability, and the shaded gray region, very narrow, is the uh, survival prob are the survival probabilities of different energy beams. So all the different beams, they follow the same uh, uh, distribution for the survival probability. And this is the analytical solution. So then we, 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 we put this information like in, in, the, in our neural networks. Of course, this, is, this time it's a bit more complicated because for each energy beam, one needs to, to run the, uh, like, like the model separately. So for the input we need is that for each energy beam, we had six parameters, the zero and first moments of electron neutrinos and anti neutrinos and new X for that specific energy beams. And at the same time, we need to have access to the information of this, this energy integrated uh, 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 survival probability. So then this is related to the energy integrated survival probability. And we do this feature engineering on top of that. And we have a neutral, uh, and we have a like layer of 150 uh, neurons and the outputs are the zero and first moment for that specific energy beam. So here I show our results, you see again the error, the absolute relative error. So first of all, you see that in this case, the errors could be much larger. So like the, the absolute relative error in the output quantities, 
it's, uh, it's like could be up to 15%. So in the previous case, it was just 5%. And also, you see that, that feature engineering is now like important. So like, like it takes something like, like uh, the error from 15%, if you don't have it, to more than 20%. So like a 25% of the reduction in the error. So this information is important. And the reason we believe is that there are two reasons for this. First of all, uh, now, considering uh, comparing this with the single energy problem, we have a problem which with much uh, with, with higher degeneracies. So this means that now this extra piece of information is very important. It can help neural network to make better decisions, to 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 make better predictions. And at the same time, so the reason uh, the reason that this error is high is that we are talking about the errors, the average errors for each energy bean. So there are some beans for which the number of neutrinos are very small. And then this means that even making a very small error for those beans then makes the, 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 the relative error, can make the relative error very large. So in, indeed, we tried this, uh, this error. We, we, we calculated this error for the, uh, uh, for, for the beans where, <coughs> where the amount of neutrinos is like 5% of the total amount of the neutrinos. And then it turns out that the error could be like at, at least, and it turns out that the error could be, again, very small, I mean, of order 5%. So this is not a big issue. And, uh, and yeah, so, yeah, that's some time. So, uh, yeah, neutrino flavor conversions cannot be ignored blindly in core collapse supernova simulations. And, of course, I think AI can help with this, but still we have, uh, we have uh, uh, lots, of, lots of issues to be addressed. And, uh, and I, I would like just to have this discussion that there is this interesting story in our, in our field that, that around 2000, I believe 2015, 2016, we were all working on slow moves. And we just learned about this, this breaking of asymmetries, about these temporal instabilities. But then suddenly fast flavor conversions appeared and everybody switched to fast flavor conversions with, with, but we are still not with a very good understanding of, a slow, of the slow modes. And space, especially if we look at our, you look at the, the, our recent results, like you see that this, uh, the flavor conversion can have like maximum impact if it occurs at the smaller densities, like 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10, where we expect in principle, will we expect indeed the, the slow moves to be active and, and to lead to significant, perhaps, flavor conversion and not the fast mode. So I think perhaps, yeah, perhaps it's, uh, it's time now to get back to, to slow modes and try to understand them better. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sajad. Time for questions. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this very nice talk. I have a couple of questions about the machine learning uh, architecture. So the first one is uh, there are conservation laws in yes. principle that apply to neutrino oscillations. Do you do something with them? Do we enforce uh, conservation uh, on your machine learning algorithm? Well, actually, for this model, this is, uh, this is like enforced by the construction. So the conservation laws are satisfied. But we also tried models where you allow for having all the output quantities here, both for electron neutrinos and anti neutrinos, and nu x and nu x bar. And then we compare the results. So I think if, if you do not, uh, if you do not uh, conserve the, the, if you do not respect the conservation laws by the construction, then the, there might be some difficulties in terms of this breaking of uh, violating this conservation law because it's, it's, it's very difficult to, 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 to make sure that, the, that they are like, uh, con that, that the physical quantities are conserved. Okay, but uh, there, so there is conservation of number, this was conservation of energy, yes. rotational invariance. Can you ensure all of these conditions to be met? So we have the conservation of numbers, conservation of energies, which are already satisfied by the fact that we only consider nu and nu bar here, and also in the way that we write our uh, our survival probability and the and the and the equilibrate our, our equilibration, then the, the lepton number conservation laws is is like uh, like uh, respected by construction. Okay, thank you. I have another related question about uh, training, where you showed the as a function of learning epoch. So it seems to me that nothing, I mean, there are not very big differences between the first iteration where supposedly you have random weights in the network and the learned output. 
Well, actually, it, it happens here. The, 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 the thing is that um, the, uh, the point is that, is that we have a large data set because the data set are produced artificially. So we were not, at this, for this case, so we were not limited in terms of the number of data points. So each epoch, we already like, like go over a huge number of data points and like, yeah. So for that reason, even, even for the first epoch, we see that like, like we already have some good results here. Okay, but at epoch zero, when you start with random weights, what is the average error at that point? Uh, well, actually, this was the calculation that I did a long time ago. I, I don't remember, but it should be large. Okay. For sure, larger than one, but, it, but uh, yeah, I don't Okay, I because it's not clear from the plot, so maybe no, the no, first point clear. is No, 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 I totally higher. agree with okay, that. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I had, thank you, Sajad. I had uh, two questions. So the first one is about the impairment of only the first two moments. So we know that this can induce some errors in actually catching the crossings because we make some approximations on the angular distributions. Do you think there is a way to take this error into, into account in the implementation of the network? Well, actually, the, the thing is that since we use, at least for some of the studies, the parametric uh, distributions, those parametric distributions, they have two free parameters. And those two free parameters, you need I0 and I1 for them, and then everything depends on the form of your distribution. So what, what is your question exactly? Yeah, that if you only use I0 and I1, you have limited information on the real angular distribution because you are yes. just uh, cutting the higher order moments, which, I mean, there, there are papers on this yes. that, that you yes. also know that you make an error. So I was just wondering, how can I take into account this error while focusing on I0 and I1, which I understand why you are doing this. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, what I would say is that when we talk about machine learning, machine learning does not, uh, is not, of course, I only have I0 and I1, but by looking at the data, machine learning learns the whole pattern. Perhaps mm -hmm. it has more information that, because we have this, 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 uh, this analytical methods in which they are very limited when you have, like, for example, zero and first moments, right? But the, the point about the machine learning is that it learns the pattern. It's not limited to the information available by I0 and I1. So this mm. is not, uh, I would say, the right way of looking at it. Okay, and then the question that I have is about the origin of these crossings, because they, we know they might come from different causes, and this also leads to a different shape of the ELN crossing which leads then in turn to different flavor conversion probabilities. So I was wondering, in this case, when you apply this analytical prescription, how do you take into account that you could have a more shallow or less shallow crossing? Well, actually, in principle, we do not check for that, but, but we have a reason for that. The reason is that we assume that, okay, if the crossing is, uh, is, uh, like, like, is very shallow and very narrow in principle, it should not lead to it should not lead to significant flavor conversion. This is this is the assumption we have. And this encoded in the network. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Well, this 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 means that we have a very small amount yeah. of flavor. So this is these are like not the models which yeah. Okay. Which affect the results significantly. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Eve Armstrong was also doing something similar, but uh, about predicting uh, MSW resonances, I mean, teaching MSW resonances to artificial intelligence. Yeah. And she mentioned that you can do this in two ways. Like, in one case, you don't teach any physics to the machine, but in the second case, there is some physical model that the machine has to obey. Do you also do that kind of yes, thing? Yes, for example, for this architecture, like, like, uh, like we add, like we do different things, and that's why this is some sort of physics-informed uh, machine learning, I would say. Physics-informed neural network is, is used for something different, but this is some sort of physics-informed machine learning. So what we do is that we have some, some loss terms. So for example, one loss term we have is for this quantity. So we want this quantity to have the minimum error. So these are, because we know that the, the at least this is one of the important quantities that the number of electron neutrinos plus the number of electron anti neutrinos versus the other species, this, this is important. We want to, to make the error for this one minimum. And for this reason, we add a loss term to, to this, uh, uh, to, to, our, uh, to our cost function or cost term to our loss, yeah. 
So, but the thing is that here, like this is, this is the base. So when we talk about the physics informed neural networks, so in the last layer, we have some new, we introduce some new loss terms, which we also do in this case. Okay, thank you. And the first two question is, uh, when you apply this algorithm to the simulation, uh, you will process the, uh, every spatial point to the neural network, right? So, so, so these are these are all like uh, trained on the artificial data, not yeah. Like so, data. when you apply uh, this algorithm to the supernova simulation, uh, you will pick uh, pick up all moment information to the neural network and uh, detect judge whether the flavor conversion occurs or not. So, that's that uh, computation expensive or is it negligible compared to the original well, that, that, that depends on, this, on the size of this neural network. Actually, mm. we are now trying to do it for the ALCA code. Mm. So we, we are trying to, to think about the implementations of, of AI, uh, of, of uh, neutrino flavor conversions using AI. So that depends, you know, you can, like, I do not have the plot here. So you can, for example, decrease the number of neurons here, but at the mm. same time, the error, like, like uh, increases. I mean, for example, there, there's always a trade-off. So perhaps you can be, ha you are happy with an error, like, of 6%, but mm. at the same time, you, you reduce your number of neurons to, like, mm. to 20. Mm. So this is something that you need to decide. But, but this 50 neurons, like, just one layer neural network, considering these GPU machines, I, I wouldn't say that this is a huge amount of, like, uh, perhaps you, you agree with that? Sim calculations. Yeah, we have done some numerical experiments with uh, neural networks inside of the mm. simulation just to see how fast they are. Mm. It depends very much on the size of the network. Networks of this size, uh, they, are, they will not be a dominant uh, okay. part of the course. Okay, thank you. And the second question is that the uh, when you apply this to the moment-based transport method, the uh, classical closure relation may not be uh, a good way to express the distribution after the conversion. Am I right? Uh, yes. So uh, you're talking about detecting flavor conversion? Um, after detecting the flavor conversion, uh, is it good, still good to use the classical closure relation or you are going to modify well, actually, the, the, After all, I should say that we are somehow limited and affected yeah. by the closure conver yeah. conversion using the simulation. But the reason that we do not consider the, the, the second and the third moment is that we are, we are minimally affected by the closure relation. Because uh, the zero and first moments are the ones that are directly followed in the simulation, right? Uh, so, mm. so then by, by just, because in principle, we could have, instead of just having I0 and I1 as input, we mm. could have added the second and the third moments. And mm. this, this is more information, so of course we, 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 we could be more accurate that way. But the problem is that then we, are, we could be significantly affected by the, uh, by, 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 by the closure uh, uh, relation. But by using just I0 and I1, we try to minimize our dependence on the closure relation, though I'm, I'm not sure if we can just, just, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, in this plot, uh, it seems that your network has only three layers, right? Uh, three layers, no, 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 this is, yeah, this is, this is, this, this is just for the weights, it's not layer, this, these are the weights that, yeah are continued, just one layer, single layer. I see. So if, uh, what, what happens if you add more layers? Well, actually, you can, that's a good question. You can, of course, decrease, not, not, especially, not for this case, but if you look at this case, you can, you can, of course, decrease your error, but there's a price to pay. And the price is that your, uh, your architecture, like, like you need to, to spend more time on, on the like, computation. This is more expensive from computational point of view. Yeah, I see. This is the price that you need to pay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay. No more. Ah, Sergey. A simple question. How much time did it take you to train? That depends on the model. For example, for this, uh, for this, uh, 
for this multi-energy model, I would say on CPU on my laptop one day, not, not that significant. Of course, if I have access to GPU, then this would be very fast. Much okay, thank you. Okay, if no more questions, because thanks, Sajad, again. Thank you.